Hello. Today's episode number 120 of the Professor Slots podcast discusses using slot strategies on video poker machines. Plus, in this episode, I'll be covering the current state of slot machine casino gambling in the great U.S. state of Colorado. Thank you for joining me for the Professor Slots podcast show. I'm John Friedel, and this is the podcast about slot machine casino gambling. It is where I provide knowledge, insights, and tools for helping you improve your slot machine gambling performance. In case you missed it, on my last episode, I went over understanding advantage play slots from my weekly live stream Q&A session on YouTube. Further, I reviewed California slot machine casino gambling in 2020. I hope you enjoyed listening to my last episode as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Remember to visit ProfessorSlots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top tier slot machine casino gambler. Here's the audio recording of my latest live stream Q&A session. Hello, Slots enthusiasts. How are you? My name is John Friedel. Welcome to Professor Slots, a channel devoted to mastering casino slots so you can win your way to success. Today, we'll be diving into can you win at video poker using winning slot strategies? It's great to see you all here again for another Professor Slots podcast episode and live stream. If you're with us live, be sure to say hello and ask your slots related questions. I'll get to those a little later in the show. But first... Thank you, Chuck, for your donation. Um, <laughs> uh, and he says it's a super chat um, for $20 and 80 and eight cents. Um, half goes to Paula's visit uh, to uh, Missouri, uh, Paula's visit Missouri fund. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. that that's, that's good. Um, uh, and thanks for letting me know the audio is good. Um, after a year, I'm starting to have more confidence. Um, right. So a couple of bad early <laughs> episodes and, yeah. um, right. So, uh, uh, so thank you for the donation. I will try not to blush. Uh, last week was so extraordinary. Once I showed everybody how to donate using the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat, um, which you can do at any time, uh, uh, be anytime before the live stream or during the live stream, uh, it was uh, pretty extraordinary. And I'm, I think I'm starting to get a little pink. Um, but um, thanks. Uh, I, 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 I win a big jackpot on a slot machine and I blush. I, 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 I after, after a while, I kind of try to calm down. Um, but that was still, it's still new and unusual to um, get 15, is it 15? Yeah, 15 um, super chats uh, or super, um, um, what is that? Super, what's the other one? Not super chat, but um, uh, super sticker. Right. And um, that was pretty extraordinary last week. Thank you so much. Um, so getting started here, audience member Paul, as well as Jerry in a recent one on one consultation, asked an excellent question about another use in the casino for my winning slot strategies. They wanted to know, can they help us win on video poker machines. I'm not a video poker expert, although I have put a reasonable amount of time into understanding them, but I know some of you are video uh, VP experts, and some of you don't know what that VP stands for video poker. Whichever the case may be, how might you apply my successful slot strategies to win at video poker electronic gaming machines? So let's find out. Oh. <laughs> And um, I have another super, uh, this is a super sticker from uh, Magpie11. Thank you so much. Um, others uh, on the show have suggested um, betting, uh, giving me a donation of what you might bet um, or what you, uh, some reasonable amount. And, and you know, I, I, thank you. Uh, Magpie's uh, emoji says, thanks for being you. <laughs> and, and, and you're welcome. Uh, I was talking to somebody who had a, club foot and he, he was you know okay and stuff college student great career all that and uh he said oh he told me he was born with it and and i said yeah i was i was born me and he kind of paused and he looked at me and he, he kind of understands a little bit about me and uh 
not a disability. Um, <laughs> thinking like this can help you win a car at a casino. Anyway, uh, this video is not about traditional video poker winning strategies. Those strategies are long standing and well known. Play each of the many types of video poker games perfectly by practicing with software uh, at home and then, you know, look through your casino's VP machines for the best pay table. Right. I um, want to make sure my next screen is ready. Um, as I previously discussed, every little bit of winning edge helps. If you can find several edges, that's even better as they add up. Choosing the right machine, selecting the best available casino, and aligning your play to your gambling goals will each individually increase your overall odds of winning to something quite substantial. This applies to slot machines, and this applies to video poker machines, and even some, you know, uh, even bingo machines, HHR machines, electronic gaming machines. Um, so with this perspective in mind regarding video poker machines, I'll assume perfect play and the best possible pay table each video and i'll give you a reference so you can if you're interested in looking some of this stuff up there are some experts out there um, so each video poker hand not played in the way math says it i use the word math i will do that sometimes um, uh, each video poker hand not played in the way math says it should be results in simply throwing away whole return percentage points you'll need to avoid doing that not playing the best pay tables available results in a similar lowering of the odds of winning. Sometimes this is acceptable, however. For instance, maybe your casino doesn't offer video poker machines with 9-6 odds, as they say. Or maybe those wonderful, hard-to-find 9-6 odds are only available on a $25 denomination machine, but you're not a high roller. In any case, I, I will assume, one, you've scraped together every bit of winning odds you can find. Two, you've learned to play your video poker game of choice perfectly. Three, the video poker machine with the best pay table has been located, where best means the pay table has the best odds of winning and the machine denomination and credits match your bankroll. Two, learn more about different games, perfect play, and pay tables for video poker. Several good resources are available to you. For example, these topics are well covered by Bob Dancer, uh, author of Million Dollar Video Poker. Uh, he doesn't have his own YouTube channel. Uh, I want to share this with you. He, he doesn't have his own um, uh, video channel, but his co-host on the long-running Gambling with an Edge podcast uh, Richard Munchkin does. Um, I'll put a link to his channel in the news in the show show notes and video description. Uh, and I'm showing this. I'm sharing this with you now, both the name of his channel as well as some of the videos. And you can see they're mostly um, episodes of their podcast. I I uh, sometimes it's I didn't try playing one of these. I, I, I listen to them regularly, but I haven't watched them on YouTube. I watch them. I listen to them on a podcast. And one of the things um, I'm not sure about is sometimes. Um, I stopped doing this myself. Uh, you could just have your thumbnail, it's called, uh, image, just showing through an hour-long interview, and there's no video, and you can do that on, on, on YouTube. Um, I used to do it, but I stopped um, uh, for reasons that help grow the channel uh, if you don't do it. Um, but um, So I don't know. We could try, I suppose, but let's not. Um, Right. If I click one of these, and go, yeah, the whole thing is just the image. Um, so uh, it, it's just the audio. So there's no reason why you couldn't watch it on, listen to it on YouTube, as well as listen to the podcast. Um, and I'm, and they have a website. I've been to that as well. Okay. So let's stop sharing that. Right. Um, so another excellent resource is Robin Aubin, A-U-B-I-N. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Um, thank you, Chip, for your $24.99 um, donation. Uh, super chat. He says, on VPs, tier point buildup is at a lower rate. Rats. Um, yes, I'll be talking about that, but I also, I'll also talk about how that kind of balances out um, uh, with sort of 
what happens with me people with video poker play. So we'll we'll get to that. Um, but thank you. Um, oh, and Chip made a donation last week with a request. Uh, and let's see if I can prop. Oh, over on this shoulder is a picture, and I will get back to sharing the screen again and share it with you that. So the guy on the um, right is, uh, excuse me, on your right, let's see, right, on, on, on your left is Emmett, uh, Emmett Brown, Dr. Doc Emmett Brown, uh, famous scientist, uh, fictional from Back to the Future. Uh, all in the middle, cat, female, calico, uh, is Marie, uh, uh, also Curie. I kind of switch back and forth. Marie Curie, uh, famous scientist, not fictional, radiation. Uh, and then there's Rudy, who came with the house, was an outdoor cat, and came inside with when the other two arrived, and he's just Rudy. <laughs> um, the first two um, are shelter cats, uh, which I try to do uh, when I can, uh, but I provided shelter to the <laughs> to Rudy. Um, anyway, um, I'll stop sharing that, but I, uh, Chip had had a request last week. Uh, also, um, I, also, I had another request after last week's show, which was, could you slow down a little bit? <laughs> You're talking really fast, and um, one of the statistics I get is how often how much I've been played back during a live stream. So I will try to keep the pace at a better pace. Sometimes these things I'm talking about um, are hard to fit into an hour, but it's no excuse for talking faster. I just have to prepare things and drop things that are less important. Um, but this is important. So I'm just letting you know how things are going. Um, okay. Uh, so um, this is not about this video is not about traditional video poker strategies. Those strategies are long standing. Um, but as discussed, every bit of winning helps. Um, so I will assume perfect play and the best possible pay table that you've done all that work um, and not to throw away any return percentage points. Uh, not playing the best available turn table results in lowering the odds of winning on a video poker machine. Sometimes this is acceptable, however, uh, and, uh, you know, maybe you don't have uh, that that, uh, you know, maybe it's only a twenty five dollar machine and it's not in your budget. So. Um, I want I want to mention a second source after Robert Munchkin gambling with an edge is Robin Aubin from N E Time Gambling, uh, Aubin A U B I N. Uh, Any Time Gambling is New New England Time Gambling N E Time Gambling. It's kind of a play on words. Um, who has been studying video poker for twenty years? Uh, put a link to Robin's website. Nice guy, by the way. Uh, is and also in the show notes. Um, from the perspective of a long-term slots gambler, which I am, video poker can best be understood as simply being skill-based slot machines. I can only imagine this is hard for long-term video poker machine players to accept, although they have been starting to come around like slots players to, ch to the changes that have occurred since most casinos now have central computer servers with their sophisticated algorithm remotely controlling gaming machine odds. Um, the best video po poker players know that card games are not the same as video games. Uh, again, th this is not strictly for video poker players. This is for slots players who might also play video poker and or don't, but should be aware that these machines exist uh, for you. Um, uh, uh, and uh, things are happening in the live chat as usual. Um, hello, hello, everybody. Um, welcome. Um, so the best video poker players uh, know that card games are not the same as video games. For instance, there is no card counting in video games because past hands are irrelevant. The computer isn't playing from a few decks of cards, but rather an infinite deck of cards from the beginning. So there's and also there's no bluffing when playing a computer, but it goes deeper than that. Someone who switches from poker as a table game to video poker machines has a hard transition to make. How how best to explain this difficulty? Well, consider the game of golf. Do you like golf? Have you played a lot of it? OK, let's say you do and have. 
Maybe you even love driving around on freshly cut grass in, in your cart. Well, not on the grass, right? Uh, etiquette. Um, shooting a game of golf with friends on a fine summer's day. Now, let's get you to instead play a video golf game. The advice I've heard a video gaming expert give a golfer playing video golf was this. Try to imagine that you're not even playing golf anymore. So use this to consider poker versus table game poker versus video poker. So translating poker to a video machine created something new. It's not entirely different as the rules are much the same, but it's not playing with physical cards anymore. And that's where the different lo difference lies. It's not physical cards, but virtual cards in an electronic simulation. Maybe you've never played skill-based slot machines. When, when playing them, an incorrect move reduces your odds of winning. But for instance, if you're playing a Space Invaders slot machine, what happens when you fire your virtual weapon and miss? Well, your overall gambling performance or winnings will be less. It's the same way with video poker. Yes, traditionally play the video poker game per perfectly. Also, of course, improve your overall odds of winning by playing machines with the best pay table. But don't stop there. Some of the best card-based poker advice I've ever heard was originally from Jimmy the Greek. I don't know if you remember him. It was a long time ago. But he said, don't play the game. Play the other player. So my advice for video poker players? Well, it's the same advice I have for playing slots. It's this. Don't play the computer. Play the casino. Next, I'll explain what I mean by playing the casino. But first, let's check in with the live chat to briefly say hello. Wow, look at all those um, super chats and super stickers. Um, I'm looking through all of our prior discussion on tacos and hamburger and um, uh, <laughs> trips to Missouri um, uh, and hard boiled eggs or not so hard boiled eggs. Um, that, that was the pre-show. Um, I, I, I'm going to say officially I have a pre-show and you only can catch the pre-show by being on the live stream because the uh, live chat is not available afterwards. Um, and I, I turn that off. So everything that happens in the live chat stays in the live chat. Where have I heard that sort of a saying before? <laughs> Um, so the, yeah, there's a pre-show kind of, I should be more thorough about it. Um, mostly we just chat. Um, so yes, Paula is our moderator today. Thank moderator today. Thank you, Paula, for being our moderator. Um, uh, let's see. Librarian stuff here. Um, Bruce is here from, uh, Southern, uh, British Columbia, Canada. Um, uh, and Dave is here from Lions, Oregon. Excellent. Uh, Chuck and, and the usual characters are here. Michael uh, uh, sends holiday greetings from Colorado. Um, and uh, uh, Dave and Lois are here. Uh, <laughs> and more arrangements uh, between Chuck and Paula. Um, Ye Grand Boss. Uh, hello. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Great to see you. Um, uh, Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Magpie, uh, who gave uh, the donation a few moments ago, uh, does playing the casino mean uh, uh, assess, assess the best pay tables? Um, uh, playing the casino means uh, my seven plus, I have seven numbered um uh, seven numbered winning strategies plus others, which I haven't given a number, um, where we're taking advantage of the casino business practices. Uh, yeah, ask your slots questions. This is um, maybe I'll have some time at the end, but I try to put it kind of in the middle. Um, uh, so ask your slots uh, questions now. But um, the first one was, uh, does playing the casino mean assessing the best pay tables? Um it can, certainly. Uh, my goodness ratio isn't something I've mentioned very often. Um, it's more like avoiding the worst pay tables. Um, sometimes, you know, like when I talk to college kids or high school kids at, you know, high school science fairs and stuff, they're, they're like, I can't decide what I want to do in college. And I, I will say, what do you not want to do? What's off the table? Uh, and 
Um, you know, you can do the same thing with slot machines. Uh, wow, which which is a good one? Well, which one's a bad one? And take those out of the list and what's left. So, yeah, my goodness ratio, which is explained uh, on candidate slot machines around the, what is it, five minute mark, um, uh, explains uh, how to avoid the worst slot machines. That's what I have for that. And but but the rest of this is um, playing the casino means uh, taking advantage of what that casino does as far as common casino business practices. Uh, and now that they can do that, there was a few. There's the old world's oldest slot machine winning strategy, um, which existed before uh, central computer servers. Um, I was the victim or the uh, um recipient of that in 2004 and it really got me started on this whole trail of understanding what's really going on with slots um, i would just assume what i was hearing about slots was true but then my experience just short in 2004 shattered what happened my, my belief in any of that and so being a physicist i just figured it out from best you know, uh, base, basic principles, uh, first principles. And you might say, well, you didn't just do that. And I'm like, well, I did it over 10 years. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not saying it was easy, but now, now, now we can talk about stuff like this uh, and not be dealing with myths and misunderstandings anymore. Um, <laughs> just joining, uh, Charlie says, do you agree that jacks are better is the best game? I certainly think that it's the one that you're most likely going to find, uh, so that, you know, a requirement on doing everything you can on video poker is the perfect play. I mean, otherwise you're just doing stuff. And, and for those who don't know, um, perfect play means it's different for different games and, you don't want to miss a single one. Uh, maybe you don't get the best hands, but which one's the best hand? And what's your choices? Um, is, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going to just give you examples of Jacks are Better has this where this other one has that. Um, but you need to learn to play the game. They may not seem very different, but they are very different as far as perfect play. So a lot of people choose jacks are better to practice 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 so they know the right answer these software packages out there and i'd show you but it's on my pc and not on my mac so i can't exactly share it um uh you know gives you the answer you make your choice as best you can and you give an answer wizard of odds um you know goes through all this the math and i think he even provides like little cards that you can print out and casinos don't mind if you have a printout to Maybe not look on your 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 electronic device, but you can take the card, and you know, so you can kind of remember the difficult ones that are, and and so people play jacks are better because they know how to play it better. Uh, and but there's other like you know bonus bonus, this is, which is fine, um, uh, and you know if you know perfect play. That's that's my choice. And if you go into a casino and you go a variety of different casinos, you're more likely to find the more common jacks are better. But do you play the bonus video poker game or the bonus bonus? Because just, you know, it's you don't give up on uh, improved odds of winning. Yeah. And jacks are better, just more popular. Uh, Bruce says, what was my aha moment in winning uh, slots learning when the casino need to do to keep players and exploiting that knowledge. Uh, we're missing a verb there somewhere. Uh, maybe you're using um, audio to text. Uh, oh, so that was your aha moment in winning at slots, learning what the casino needed to do to keep uh, to keep players uh, and exp uh, and then you're exploiting that knowledge. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <clears throat> right. So, uh, that's all the questions that are in the live chat at the moment. Uh, let's keep talking about video poker. So, um, this is not meant to be an irrelevant live stream, right? This is for slots players. Um, but I think it's useful, um, to give examples, right? Hey, uh, Nadine uh, is here from um, uh, uh, from Hawaii. Aloha, um, wonderful. Um, 
Uh, right. So this is for slots players. Um, but slots players will ask about video poker. Paul did. Jerry did. Um, even very recently on one of my more, rec- uh, more recent, uh, was it Saturday, Sunday last week? Um, from uh, or was it two weeks ago? Uh, from from Jerry in a one on one consultation, um, uh, was like, "Well, I have a very odd question." And I'm like, "Bring it, right? Just like this live stream, bring it." And uh, he said, "I wanted to ask you about video poker." And I'm like, "Oh no, I've I've gotten that question. Wrote up an you know article on it and be happy to tell you all about it." And he was like, "Really? <laughs> like, yeah, it's not inconceivable. Somebody might want to know about this. Uh, a slots player might want to know about this. Um, machines are machines. So um, uh, what's the advantage here for the rest of us? Um, even if you don't play sl- video poker, don't want to play video poker, the advantage of this live stream is I will explain how to use each of my slot strategies, the numbered one and plus one more, uh, and not the money management or other stuff that we could talk about some other time. Um, and I have a series coming out one uh, this this earlier a couple of days ago, yesterday, um, on money management, 11 practical tips. And I think we're up to five now, uh, two per video. It's a short video. Anyway, um, so it's helpful uh, to do examples. When I was teaching physics, uh, we'd uncover this new principle, right? Uh, electro, electromagnetism or whatever. And, and I would give examples. And then I'd give a test. <laughs> so so let's go through some examples of how this applies to video poker. Um, and uh, you can use that to better understand your upcoming test, not from me, but the next time you go to the casino. So um, uh, let's go through each one of these and see how they work. Um, so briefly, my winning slot strategies are about recognizing patterns. For instance, casino operators may directly install a winning slot machine at a specific location in the casino, or winning slot machines may be indirectly determined through their choice of casino operating system. Directly means a casino deliberately increases the odds of winning on a slot machine placed at a specific location in the casino, such as a high traffic area. If the high traffic area moves, right? Before lunch, after lunch, that sort of thing. Um, Simple example. Uh, So does the specific slot machine set to win. You're in the hallway and there's a slot machine here and everybody's going that way for lunch. But then there's a slot machine over here where everybody's going back from lunch. You would, the casino would move the the a machine with the best odds and they can easily do that with these central servers so whether or not the casino has chosen to do so is our un- our task to uncover if we can i'll talk about this approach um, i'll talk more about this approach practically its own winning strategy in another video sometime soon so many videos to produce <laughs> so little time um uh Right. So we've got a long list of um, uh, things to talk about. I don't see Linda here, but uh, the random number generator explanation that from what, 20, 20 years ago that everybody seems to follow, um, you know, it was not great 20 years ago. And now with the central server, it's wrong. And I've got it. I've got the script figured out um, how exactly I want to explain something without getting too deep into calculus. But I do need to have a couple of, oh, I use the word calculus. Um, <laughs> uh, um, uh, I love the word calculus. Um, uh, but I need to figure out the graphics uh, so I can show curves and stuff um, and, and explain all that so that people understand how uh, what's changed or where the misunderstanding was. Right. So um, I'll work on that coming up. It's percolating to the top of my list. As you may already know, if you've been watching my videos, modern casinos have are now using a central computer to remotely set and adjust the odds of winning on their gaming machines. There are several strategic approaches a casino might use to do this, each with its with a tactical counter approach, uh, which I figured out, which I call my winning slot strategies. Those of you who have been here a lot know this, but those and there's always going to be no new. I'm growing. Um, uh, there's always going to be new uh, uh, people coming to the live stream. So I want to make sure you understand the basics of what's going on uh, with my approaches. Now, 
uh, just a brief aside, we've got time, a brief aside, uh, do you know how many subscribers some of these other um, slots channels have or even gambling channels have on, on YouTube? Um, you know, Brian Christopher is 300,000 American. Uh, it's not a half million. It's not a million. It's not nothing like that. It's only 300,000. And um, winning with a, a, a gambling with an edge, Rod, uh, Richard Munchkin, despite being so long lasting, uh, it's 3,500. You know, if I get 600 more subscribers, I'll beat out gambling with an edge. What the heck? You know, it, it, I think there's a lot of fertile ground here. I would love to get to a million subscribers. Uh, feel free to subscribe. I'm, I'm not asking you to, um, if you wanted to, you would have done it already. Uh, and a lot of people, there's, you know, subscribers don't count. It's a vanity metric, but on the other hand, it gives some indication of the popularity of a channel and nobody's crossed a million. Nobody I know has crossed a million. Um, it seems like some of the best ones out there, that's not Brian Christopher, who seems to be at the top of the pack, um, is what, 40K? I mean, I think that's where American uh, uh, American Casino Guide is at. Uh, and, and I'm just astonished at such low numbers. Um, let's get us, you know, it might take a year, it might take two years. Um, let's, get, let's get it over a million. Um, I know it's ambitious, but Let's not mess around anymore. Uh, so that's what my goal is for this business um, and helping you and getting the word out. Um, uh, so, uh, as um, right, so not every win not every winning slot machine strategy works at every casino. Remember, this is important. My videos on winning slot strategies have been as much about how a slot machine strategy works as it is, as it is about identifying whether a specific casino is susceptible to it. Put another way, if a casino hasn't installed a winning slot machine in full view of a major walkway in their casino to entice others to play slots after seeing someone else win, then it's not their no matter how hard we look. In this next section, I'll apply my winning slot strategies to playing video poker and discuss if we can get an advantage from advantage play from it. Some will work, some may not work. Let's examine them. So the world's oldest slots, uh, oldest winning slot strategy, a recent uh, uh, live stream that I went over, um, uh, it deliberately improves the odds of winning on a slot machine in full view of other casino patrons. Basically, the idea here is to entice passersby to also play slots when they might not otherwise. Uh, this was the only winning strategy before central servers came out. They would open up the machine, adjust the odds, leave it high uh, for uh, whatever budget they happen to have then, maybe in April when uh, people going to the casino is kind of like the season to do that. Um, uh, people are not on vacation yet, but the kids are out of school. Uh, and yeah, they'd give out a few hand pays and then they would re um, get back some of that cost um, back by letting that jackpot be seen by passersby. So they raise the odds on machines that are visible and not like facing a wall, but facing a clearing, a bar, a walkway. Um, uh, so you tell me, are video slot machines ever visible from high traffic areas? Consider how many video poker machines a casino might have. Typically not a lot, right? Not compared to how many slot machines they might have. They might have thousands of slot machines and a hundred video poker machines at most. Um, they're usually, and they're usually off in an area by themselves, not spread all over the casino. So people can find them. Maybe. What's your casino setup like? So having successfully employed this strategy to slot machines, I'd say it might apply to a very few of the VP machines in a video poker area. Look for a machine visible from the entryway on the end of an aisle, second day end of the aisle, whatever, whatever, you know, to passersby, whatever it has, you know, wherever it's situated such um, that it can be seen. Those are the ones to test the strategy on, but carefully. My winning strategy, slot strategy number one, is when moving on uh, through each of these strategies, my winning slot strategy number one, um, only win immediately, is when casinos set up their machines to win immediately, but then don't offer any more wins if continuing to play. Uh, this is one of my most popular videos, and you can go find it on my channel. This slot strategy is just as cheap and easy to check on 
video poker machines as it is on slots. When I found a casino set up, uh, has set up their machines this way, all the machines are set up this way. That means you can test it first on cheaper machines to confirm it exists before optimizing your, your profit by playing your usual bet size with which you are, you're comfortable. So go find, and this is one of the things that uh, didn't quite make it in the video uh, that's so popular, which is the test procedure. So many people are like, well, I'm just going to, <laughs> so many people, and they're all gamblers, right? They, they gamble. They go and they go say, well, I'm just going to go right straight through the high limit machines and make max bet. And I'm like, there's a whole testing step. Ah, I'm a gambler. And I'm like, no. Uh. So um, I'll mention it here in other places. F go find 20 penny machines, penny slot machines. This is not about making money. This is about whether or not you win. So go find penny slot machines, uh, 20 of them, and bet one cent five times in a row. Stop if you win anything at all. It's not about the money. It's about whether or not you win. What This is the test procedure. One by one, try the next machine that also has hopefully been sitting idle for a while because that can help too. Did it happen again? Did you win? How often, you know, continue on. How often? More than half the time on half the machines or less than half the machines? The best result if it happens on every machine. If you can find a casino that does this, all you can do is find the casino. You can't make the casino do this, if that makes sense. Um, if this keeps happening for all kinds of slot machines, then you can expect it to happen uh, with that casino's video poker machines. Um <laughs> uh, <laughs> someone said Fib uh, Fibonacci uh, numbers. <laughs> um, let's not abuse people's sensitive sensitivities to math topics. <laughs> but that was that was lovely. If I could heart that, I would heart that. <laughs> that comment in the live chat. Uh, Fibonacci numbers, geez. Um, so my winning strategy number two is uh, for video poker machines with progressive jackpots. Uh, a little unusual to have a v VP machine with a progressive jackpot, but they do exist. So you apply it to VP machines the same way you would for progressive slots. Be aware that not every casino has progressive video poker machines, but the good news is those, machi those casinos that do typically only have a few. There are certainly far fewer than non-VP progressive slot machines. Uh, as you may know, the progressive machine strategy takes many casino visits and is spread over time. So having fewer machines to check often makes all that time and effort easier. So my uh, winning strategy number three, as we're marching through these, uh, my winning strategy number three is all about earning complimentary gifts. And this is uh, goes back to what Chip was saying earlier about making less points for the same amount of money uh, when you're playing video poker machines as with slot machines. But we'll get to that. Um, so this, so you can earn complimentary gifts. Uh, it's a well-known strategy for video poker. Um, as mentioned by video poker experts, comps are often the only way to come out ahead in video poker. However, be aware that VP machines often earn perhaps half the points for comp points for every dollar spent than slot machines. But you can play a lot longer on VP machines, basically, you know, cycling your your bankroll than most slot machines. So it all kinds all kinds of all. All, it all kind of slot balances out um, with with a long term 99% return on some video poker games getting harder to find those a few complimentary gifts can result in a personal profit for players. Sometimes it's the only way they can win more than they put into the machine. Because of this, that's why casinos usually reduce the player club points as we were talking about earned for playing video poker relative to playing slots because they cycle more. Video poker machine needs a cycle more. So um, uh, I can, we've got some stuff going on in the chat, but I'll, I'll come back to that uh, towards the end here. Um, my winning strategies, number four and number five, are all about casinos adjusting the odds of winning during and after uh, special events, uh, lowering it during and uh, improving it after um, car giveaways, derby day, and holidays, which we have coming up. So if you're interested in those, uh, see those winning strategies for the coming holidays, um, or rather the morning after 
upcoming holidays, uh, make sure you take a look at those videos. Um, can casinos do this video po- uh, do this with video poker machines? Yes, as modern casinos have central computers which adjust the odds of winning on their machines on a daily or multiple multiple day basis. Sure. Uh, does your casino do it? That's the question. Well, do you play at a riverboat casino, Chuck? <laughs> or or anywhere in the state of Washington. I don't remember anybody being here today from from uh, the Washington. Uh, if not, uh, and it has more than around 50 machines. I've been talking to somebody in New Zealand and the, the casinos are very small and it's really not affordable for the casino to get the software to run everything unless you have at least 50 machines. And a lot of them have eight, you know, or 10 or 18. Uh, and so, you know, as long as it's not a small casino, a gas casino in, you know, Wyoming or something like that, uh, um, you know, that makes it worthwhile for the casino to have installed, purchased and installed a central computer server. Um, my financially rewarding for them. So my winning strategy number six, moving on, is about optimizing profit after finding a vi- winning strategy that works. As mentioned, some of my strategies apply to machines, uh, apply to machines, re- require a very low bankroll to test. Then if such a test is positive, you can optimize it by trying it on higher denomination machines. Don't go over what you have available. You know, don't exceed what you're comfortable spending because you have to assume the worst. Um, so testing is very important um, and it reduces as it reduces your financial risk. And finally, my winning strategy number seven is apparently rare to find. However, it is a strategy I use to get seven stars, top tier status in six weeks over about a dozen three hour periods, three hour sessions. It didn't help me with uh, win a car that was uh, supported by strategy number one, but I was nevertheless quite pleased with it. So coming back a week later, a few minutes earlier, playing the same video poker machine, um, the reason why that's hard to do is because you have to actually see that win. And with so few machines uh, at most casinos, so few video poker machines at most casinos, there's a trouble. You got to find somebody that wins. Um, And it's just less often than, you know, you see a casino with thousands of slot machines. And, you know, it's just a matter of whether or not you're in range of of seeing it. Um, um, Anyway, that's kind of covers that point. Um, So might you find this winning strategy works for video poker. Well, if it's very casino dependent, I found it at uh, the brand new Horseshoe Cincinnati in the same year that the nearby Belterra Park finished their extensive renovations. Uh, As I mentioned, this one is rare, but incredibly valuable if your casino has it. Do I suspect any casinos having this winning strategy in place? Yes, I do. Without having tried it myself, And just looking at the business tension, as it were, I suspect MGM Springfield in Massachusetts and the Board of Connecticut employed it during their first year. Uh, I think it was like last year um, when they opened. Uh, And do you have any? So the question is, do you have any new casinos near you? Something that's opened within the last year, possibly two years. Um, Why is MGM Springfield doing this because they are trying to build a reputation in southern New England where every resident has a casino within a two hour drive. Frank and Ohio like is a saturated, uh, excuse me, Iowa is a saturated market. Um, there is a casino within every hour drive uh, for people in Iowa. So this is the sort of thing that um, America is coming to, uh, but not yet, there yet. More and more casinos are coming in until it market is saturated, but it's not in many places. So this is indeed special to have a new casino. Uh, it's a known strategy, known approach that worked very well for Horseshoe Cincinnati. And not long after, uh, they were purchased by Jack Casino and more recently by Hard Rock. So they're establishing the reputation with a local community and people who are in driving distance or fly in, but they're also uh, making a reputation for potential buyers, which is really, I mean, they built that casino. The original people who invested in it to construct that building were looking for payday that they were willing to wait two and a half years for. And then they got paid. All right. So this is what invest. This is how investors think um, that 
uh, uh, popularity, that reputation. That's why it's so valuable uh, is, is, you know, money in the bank. And it's not just for commercial casinos. It's also matters to tribal casinos. They can't be sold, but they do have business plans and they want to get loans and they want to do some other things that, uh, business-wise where having a great reputation matters. Then you get the ones that aren't trying to do any of that. And um, yeah, they shady it's, it can happen. Um, anyway, you look at this stuff and you ask yourself, um, you know, is that casino doing this? And these are some of the reasons why it might be doing it. Uh, you can just look at the return statistics. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Um, so this final winning strategy comes with a strong warning. Uh, in all of what I just said, there's something to watch out for. If your new casino has set it up, it's set itself up to do this and the decent ones do to forevermore have billboards honestly saying that they have the best slots and most jackpots, then take this warning to heart. Enjoy your wins in the first year as they'll come easy. Enjoy your wins in the second year of the casino being open as those two will still be easy. Not as easy. Oh. Chip has given a uh, super... Ch chat uh without saying anything uh, for $24.99 and I think I might have been able to not blush <laughs> this time but thank you chip I'll put it towards um how much I spent on the frame for the cats <laughs> um thank you um so uh the second year of a newly opened casino um it's still easy to win uh compared to everything else but uh, not as easy as the first year. So what you should watch out for, however, is the third year of it being open. Those new casinos have a budget for construction as well as establishing itself in the community. In the third year, casinos are doing this, <clears throat> casinos doing this, drop their payout returns uh, to the going forward normal. Put another way, they'll be wanting all their money back from you. Uh, see, uh, there's a, I haven't, I was on ABC Evening News, uh, a local channel in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where they were doing an investigative report about their local casino, Penn National, which is operated by Hunt, uh, Hollywood. And you can watch this segment on my uh, on this convenient link, which I'll drop into. Hopefully, this will work um, into the sh show notes. But it's real simple to remember. Um, uh, and you may have seen it before if you've been here a while. Uh, professorslots.com slash ABC27. Uh, and that, that's a shortcut that'll take you to a much longer, harder to remember URL on the uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, uh, Channel 27 ABC uh, website. And you can watch this video yourself where they look at their local Penn Nationals. Um, Pennsylvania provides return statistics and you can see they mapped it all out and you can see that first year was awesome and then it, on, the, on the returns, but it never came back to, to that. It's still very low. Why is that in part? Um, and they mentioned this right at the last like 30 seconds uh, when they talk, when the anchors talk to one another, um, they don't have a competition. Uh, up in Philadelphia is where the competition is and that's not close enough. So it's just one casino in that area. Uh, right. Um, <clears throat> so I, as I pointed out in this news report, if you can't adjust your gaming and think the game, the wins will just keep on coming like they did, you're in for a world of hurt. Just remember to trim back your gaming machine betting at new casinos after the first year or possibly two. You can thank me later. Now, my local uh, Miami Valley Gaming in Ohio, uh, I, I've checked uh, its uh, statistics from the beginning when it opened in 2013, late 2013. In that first month, uh, that Ohio offers monthly return statistics. That first month was good. After that, it was low. Um, but then it kind of went, how do I do this? Um, it started up here and then it went um, down, 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 down. No, no, no. It went down and then it started climbing back up. Never to the original. It started climbing back up. And then it went dropped. So the most recent um, return statistics for Miami Valley Gaming uh, is from July. So they're about four months behind. Others are like uh, Arkansas. No, um, Missouri is 
uh, September, Mississippi, most recent report is October. So, you know, it depends how long they turn it, take to turn it around. Um, but back in July, it was the, it was so bad at Miami Valley. Um, it was, uh, as much as it dropped that first month to the second month when it first opened, it was more than that below that low amount in July. Um, but I think what's happening now, because I've been looking at the more recent ones from Missouri and Mississippi, and I'll have to wait for Miami Valley Gaming for a couple months, um, but it looks like they're recovering. So a lot of people have been concerned about you know, casinos, maybe tribal casinos, others. Uh, they would drop it um, just to get money back for having been closed for a couple months. And it kind of looks like if that's a national trend um, for the casinos who know that their reputation matters in so many ways, uh, that they are, you know, done with that uh so we're starting to you know i'm hearing more about jackpots i'm hearing more about good times at the casino and all my um uh, facebook community groups for each state uh including professor slots and enthousi enthusiasts and um yeah uh, professor slots.com slash fb will give you the list of all the states and you can just join facebook or you can search on facebook um right wow look at all this um uh, let's go through some of these questions uh, and uh, some of this is talking amongst each individuals. Uh, let's see, we answered that question and that question, uh, and we're up to Aloha. Um, so, have you ever made the infamous mistake of playing it all, playing it all back in your years of action? <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Famously, uh, one time I won a $14,000 jackpot a couple of days before my annual trip as a seven stars to Las Vegas, my place of choice. And I wanted to go there. Um, I like it. I like to go there on 4th of July, 4th of July weekend. But it's uh, what, four days, three nights. And I get there just before the day before California arrives. That's how I put it. A lot of people. Uh, and then I leave the day after they leave. And at first time, you know, I'm just like, I haven't, just, you know, stayed at Caesar's Palace before. That's, that was my choice. And I just trying to, you know, everything's comped and there's $800 room credit or vouchers and $500 room credit. And just, you know, I've got uh, uh, on my card, my player's card, I've got seven. Seven thousand dollars, you know, to, to to wherever I can use it, and half the strip is owned by Caesars, whatever, maybe eighty percent. But um, at the time, and I was just like, okay, uh, I've got some learning to do, so I can talk about this later on the show, and etc. This is back when I had podcasts, but not yet a YouTube channel. Uh, then year after that, and year after that, I I, I went, but um, I took this fourteen thousand dollars with me, and I. Uh, didn't take all of it. I took eight thousand dollars of it. That's right. Um, and I played at um, a, half of it. I spent on like a nice hat <laughs> and uh, and cowboy boots and a few other things because I was in Las Vegas. But half of it, um, four thousand dollars, I broke up into five hundred dollar increments, and I went to uh, um, what is that? Eight different high limit rooms on the strip. And five hundred dollars in Caesars, five hundred dollars in across the street, but blah, 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 working my way down to Mandalay Bay, where I arrived with five hundred dollars, and uh, left out of the four thousand. And um, I don't know why I didn't learn my lesson by then, but then I, you know, I was learning and and learning to tell you guys some of this stuff. And I went into that high limit room and. Have I, have I told you about, you know, looking to see how busy it is uh, in past live streams I had? And that one was like obviously busy. You know, I won't say the slot attendants were sweating, but they were not sitting still. They were servicing, servicing. And I went over to the floor manager. There was actually a floor manager stationed in the high limit room, which is not a new, which is they're only there if they need to be there. And apparently this guy needed to be there. So so I, I said, how many people have won? Uh, you know, hand pays. And he's like, oh, we've had a bunch this morning. Oh, look, there goes another one. You know, turn around and someone just won another one. And I should have just spent the whole $4,000 at that casino uh, instead of, um, you know, losing all of it at seven other casino high limit rooms. But I, I learned my lesson. And um, then there was another time when I uh, won $27,000 and uh, I left with a lot less than I should have. 
Um, I should have just turned around and walked out, but I had never won anything over $5,000. I won like $5,000 hand pays four or five times at that point, but I had nothing higher. And, you know, later on I won 10,000, 14,000, stuff like that. But 27,000 um, was, I'll call it my highest one of the car was worth 40 K, um, which I took. So, um, yeah, I, I, I've had that experience and, you know, you, uh, Niles Bohr said, uh, quote, and I'm translating from the Dutch, not that I know Dutch, um, an expert is someone who's made every possible mistake within a narrow field. I've made these mistakes, learned from them and, and put them together in a book and sharing them with them with you now. Um, <laughs> I don't care for calculus. Uh, uh, calculus is indistinguishable, indistinguishable for magic um, before <laughs> saying some of these things. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead and buy my book for a Christmas present for you. Um, the most I've ever sold of my book um, was 10 copies. The last day you could order the soft cover, I have an audio book and an ebook as well, but the last day you could order a soft cover to get it by Christmas <laughs> was, was last year. And I'm, I'm just waiting to see what happens this year. Um, Chip says he loves geometry and trig, but I don't like algebra or calculus. Does that make sense? <laughs> We all have our favorites, Chip. We all have our fav favorites. Um, uh, I remember not liking trigonometry, but then I started mowing a lawn and it, it all became a lot more fun. Uh, triangles, 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 circles, circles. Uh, right. So now that we all have shared our opinion about math, what else do we have here? Uh, does anyone feel you can make a profit with only like $20? Um, yeah. What I like to, to suggest is... You know, I'm not trying to tell anybody what their bankroll should be, but I will say you need to make 100 bets. So what's $20 divided by 100? Two cents. So each bet, you know, a penny machine with uh, two credits would be two cents, and that would allow you to make 100 bets, and that lets the machine run long enough to maybe have something happen. Now, if you stop at 20, and don't go directly to 100. Stop at 20 and go, have I won anything at all? Is, you know, have I won anything that seems significant? Does this seem like a winning machine? If the answer is no, move on. So often I'll say have 120 bets so that you can try a couple different machines before you run out of cash. And that's how you do it. I mean, just give up on this whole idea of push, push, push to having more and more amount until you're, you know, you're spending money you don't have. And so, yeah, divide what you take to the casino by 100, bet 20 times. Uh, um, and if that's a good machine, stay. If it's not, go to another one. And you can, $20 is a fine bankroll. People used to take $20 rolls of quarters back when we had coins. And, you know, here I am with my quarters and da-da-da. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, I used to take 2500 every time I went, but I was playing high limits. Uh, but I never played a $100 machine because to get 20, uh, to get 100 bets, on a, you know, uh, a $100 machine, I'd, I'd need what? $10,000? And I didn't have that. So I'm not playing it. Um, and even then you should probably want to have more than that. Okay. Uh, a few minutes left. Um, yeah, Chip has been applying a lot of my techniques. Um, we've been doing a lot of back and forth. It's part of the reason why he's donating so much and much appreciated. Uh, we've been having long conversations back when I had, <laughs> right now I'm, I'm dealing with like three hours worth of email responses and that's my limit i have to work on the next video and whatnot so i i, I i'm i'm now exceeding how, how much time i have per day um so chip took advantage when nobody was emailing me to email the heck out of me <laughs> um you had your chance uh let's see Bruce says, I have used the five pull trick many times to test for finding loose slots excellent um and uh, Chuck says, wants to revisit the basics. Haven't had a hand pay this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's an interesting year, right? Uh, Crystal says, I use a few hundred. I do hit one credit, then up the credits on the machine. This hopefully for back-to-back -back wins. Yep, yep. Oh, and if you, um, you know, these little tips, I try to put them in. Uh, if you win something, 
one more bet. All right. Just one more bet because sometimes they're back to back. You'd be surprised how often it happens. I've seen people get up from their hand pay, go away, and I'm just like, well, I'm going to you know, sing. Oh, look at that second one. <laughs> and, and so one bet after you win or somebody else wins if they walk away. Uh, let's see. And if it's, um, uh, Steve's here, a uh, little bit late to the show. Uh, I have statistics in front of me and it looks like about the 12 minute, uh, about 1230 was whenever, when most people arrived, it like doubled. Um, so, uh, what's that all about? Should I start the show at 1230 and then you'll all be here at one. Um, um, so, uh, thanks for suggesting everybody hit the like button. Um, uh, helps grow, the, grow the channel a little bit. Uh, let's see. So the URL is a link, um, but it doesn't have the HTTPS in front of it. Uh, it's what's called a shortcut. Um, so if you type into your browser, professorslots.com slash ABC27, it will jump you to a much longer, more complicated uh, URL at the ABC News 27 Harrisburg um, website. <laughs> complicated enough for you. Um, Yep, it does matter, Crystal. Uh, uh, all depends on what your goal for the day is. Yep, 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 yep. I completely agree. Uh, what's hard for some, what's hard to watch is some people were like, my goal is to win money. And then they win money and they're like, my goal is to spend money. <laughs> and it's just like, but five minutes ago it was to win money. What happened? Uh, stick with your goals for your visit unless you change them. Uh yeah, David, you might want the um, ebook. Uh, you can expand it on your readers uh, so the print's easier to read. Uh, completely get that. Um, okay, so uh, thank you, Paula. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. Mostly I try to, um, I'm trying to make this one of uh, professorslots.com slash ABC27, something easy, easy to remember instead of linking on, remember the, the live chat doesn't exist after um, is, is tucked away after the live stream. So, um, yeah, uh, that's why I tend not to use them anymore. Um, let's see. Yep. Everybody have a great weekend. Um, if you don't, if I don't see you next week or the week after, I think we're coming out upon holidays then. Um, hope everybody has a great holiday season. Um, thank you so much for the donations um, and the super chats and the and the super stickers. Uh, much appreciated. And for you, those of you on the podcast, um, we will continue on uh, with the next segment of the show. So um, thank you, everybody. And um, take care. Bye. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. This is the next segment of the show on slot machine casino gambling. Here, I provide a brief overview of the current state of gambling in the U.S. state, territory, or the federal district, emphasizing by far anything of interest to slot machine casino gamblers. Up next is Colorado slot machine casino gambling in 2020. Here goes. Colorado slot machine casino gambling consists of 31 casinos in the three historic mountain towns of Black Hawk, Central City, and Cripple Creek, including two American Indian tribal casinos within the state. The minimum legal gambling age in Colorado depends upon the gambling activity. For land-based casinos and poker rooms, it's 21. For bingo, the lottery, and paramutual wagering, it's 18. Legalized gambling arrived in 1991 for Black Hawk, Central City, and Cripple Creek. In 2008, Colorado voters approved raising the maximum bet in these towns from $5 to $100. In November 2020, Colorado voters gave voters in these three towns the right to vote to add new games and ability to raise the maximum bet limit for their municipality, potentially providing a boost to their economies. The two national historic districts are Black Hawk Central City and Cripple Creek. When legalized in 1991, the hope was that gaming in these towns would revive and protect them. Next up is a usually short statement about slot machine private ownership, which I have included in case you live in this U.S. state and are considering owning a slot machine. Here it is. It is legal in the state of Colorado to own a slot machine privately if manufactured before 1984. 
The Colorado Division of Gaming regulates gambling in the three historic mountain towns. This gaming control board is within Colorado's Department of Revenue's Enforcement Division. Regulation of gaming at Colorado's two tribal casinos is through their negotiated tribal state compacts, allowing Class III Vegas-style electronic gaming machines and table games. These gaming compacts created Colorado's two tribal gaming control commissions, which operate with support from the State Gaming Control Board. These are the Southern Ute Indian Tribe Division of Gaming and the Ute Mountain Gaming Commission. In this section, I'll discuss Colorado gambling establishments. Colorado has 29 commercial casinos and two American Indian tribal casinos with slot machines. The largest casino in Colorado is Ameristar Casino Resort Spa Blackhawk with 1,513 gaming machines. The second largest casino is Monarch Casino Resort Spa Blackhawk with 1,200 gaming machines. There are 29 commercial casinos within the historic mountain towns of Blackhawk, Central City, and Cripple Creek. Blackhawk, 50 miles west of Denver, has 15 casinos with a total of 5,353 gaming machines. Central City, 4 miles west of Blackhawk, with its 5 casinos, has 1,479 gaming machines. And Cripple Creek, 112 miles south of Denver, has 9 casinos with a total of 2,736 gaming machines. Central City is relatively more historic than the other two mountain towns. Blackhawk is much more of a typical casino town, nearly reminiscent of Las Vegas. Cripple Creek feels like a bit of both. Blackhawk and Central City are only four miles apart. Consequently, there is a heated competition between these two towns for revenue since gambling legalized in 1991. As usual, when there are too many casinos to mention here, a complete list with a casino map are on my website for this state at professorslots.com co. Colorado also has two tribal casinos, one, the Sky Ute Casino Resort in Ignacio, 330 miles southwest of Denver near the Arizona border, operated by the Southern Ute Indian Tribe, and two, Ute Mountain Casino Hotel in Tawak, 400 miles southwest of Denver near the southwest corner of Colorado and 112 miles west of Ignacio, operated by the Ute Mountain Tribe. As an alternative to enjoying Colorado slot machine casino gambling, Consider exploring casino options in a nearby state. Border in Colorado is to the north, Wyoming. To the northwest, Nebraska. To the east, Kansas. To the south, New Mexico. To the southeast, Oklahoma. To the west, Utah. And to the southwest, Arizona at Four Corners. To visit any of my articles on these U.S. states, simply visit ProfessorSlots.com followed by its two-letter postal designation. For example, my Wyoming Slots article is available at ProfessorSlots.com slash WY. Are you interested in sharing and learning with other slots enthusiasts in Colorado? If so, join our Colorado Slots community on Facebook at professorslots.com slash FBCO. All you will need is a Facebook profile to join this private Facebook group freely. There, you'll be able to privately share your slots experiences as well as chat with players about slots gambling in or near Colorado. Again, use this convenient link I've created to go directly to our group on Facebook, professorslots.com slash FBCO. Join us. No theoretical payout limits exist for Colorado's commercial or tribal casinos. The Division of Gaming offers return statistics by slot machine denomination. These hold percentages come statewide and are for each of the three historic mountain towns, but not by individual casino within those towns. Player win percent is 100% minus the hold percent provided. From the recent month of October 2020, player return percentages for all denominations were statewide 92.6%. Blackhawk, 92.2%, Central City, 94.2%, the highest town return, and Cripple Creek at 93.3%. These monthly reports also provide return statistics by slot machine denomination. For October 2020, $2 denomination slot machines in Blackhawk had the highest return at 96.4%. However, the state report shows that there are only 30 $2 slot machines in Blackhawk but careful evaluation of $2 returns in other months may indicate this high return was due to an outlier from a single large jackpot win, perhaps. The second highest return is from the $1 denomination slot machines in Central City. As the state return shows 143 such machines there, it is less likely to be an outlier and more likely be a majority of the $1 slot machines in Central City. Colorado's two tribal casinos do not have publicly available return statistics. In summary, Colorado slot machine casino gambling consists of 29 commercial casinos in the historic mountain towns of Blackhawk, Central City, and Cripple Creek. Two tribal casinos are on reservations near the Arizona border and in the southwest corner of Colorado. 
In November 2020, voters approved Amendment 77 of the Colorado Constitution with 60% of residents in favor. The amendment gives local control to residents of Central City, Black Hawk, and Cripple Creek to vote to add new casino games and raise the maximum bet limit, capped at $100 since 2008. Otherwise, Maristar Blackhawk added about 260 slot machines while Monarch Blackhawk climbed to second largest casino in Colorado, moving past Isle of Capri. Remember to visit ProfessorSlots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Part one of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast will include a live stream Q&A session on YouTube. Next week's live stream will be about tribal gaming. Remember, my weekly Q&A session on YouTube is on Saturdays from noon until 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Bring whatever slots questions you have and I'll do my best to answer them. An easy to remember link to my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Professor Slots. Feel free to stop by anytime during my hour long live Q&A session. Part two of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is another brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district. Next time, I'll be talking to you about the great U.S. state of Connecticut. That's the end of another great episode of the Professor Slots podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Show notes for this episode are on my website at professorslots.com slash episode 120. I plan to have the next episode come out very soon for you, where I'll have more amazing content for the show. Until the next episode, have fun, be safe, and make good choices. Bye.